Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Stock, the stock markets sell off quite a bit. In the United States, the Dow right now is down over 1,500 points from its high. My question to you is, what is your perspective on this? Why do you see it, why do you see it happening? And do you see a sell-off continuing in the United States and around the world? Yes, I think uh, everybody would like to know whether after this correction, which is not very substantial in comparison to previous corrections, whether after this correction it's a buying opportunity or whether investors should sell or reduce their positions on any rebound. My sense is that uh, the world's economy is slowing down meaningfully. We have lots of announcements by uh, economic sensitive companies, whether these are multinational uh, German automobile manufacturers, or industrial companies that serve uh, numerous markets around the world, like Textron and so forth, the announcements have been guiding on the downside. And uh, it's obvious that the Chinese economy is slowing down. And I'm an economist, uh, but I also look at to what is happening around me, I can say that there is a slowdown in economic activity everywhere I go to. So I'd say that uh, corporate profits will likely disappoint at the time when valuations are very high and at the time when global liquidity is tightening. So my view would be, yes, maybe there will be a rebound on a very short-term basis. We're oversold, but we're nowhere near as oversold as we were in, say, February 2016. That was the last big correction from where the bull market continued to roar. But uh, we are oversold on a short-term basis, and we can rebound somewhat the seasonal strength between now and early next year. But uh, I doubt that the majority of shares will make new highs. Uh, maybe a few shares will make new highs, but uh, my sense is that the indices, of most markets around the world, they peaked out already. Now, last time we had you on, you were talking about how you thought it was unlikely that a major crash was going to happen anytime soon, but more like a slow uh, grinding down, in a sense, of the stock markets around the world. Um, what is your perspective? I, a lot of people I'm talking about is are saying that they're looking for a more than 50% crash sometime soon. It doesn't seem like that's what you're looking for right now. Well, I would not rule out that uh, a large number of stocks will drop by 50%. Don't forget, a large number of stocks 
have already dropped by 30-40%. So 50% is now not out of the ordinary. But I say this, uh, I went through the 87 crash, we dropped by 21% in just one day. That is a crash. Or if you crash within uh, 10 days by 20% or 15%, that is kind of a crash. I don't expect that right now. I think that uh, central banks will come back in and ease monetary conditions and so forth. So I don't see a collapse. But I think over the next two years, uh, investors will not make any money in equities, as, by the way, most investors have not made any money over the last 12 months. Some stocks have gone up, but if you look at global markets, uh, with the exception of the U.S. and maybe one or two other markets, all of them are in the red. So I think that the situation for investors is not very conducive to its large capital gains. I rather think that uh, most investors who have a diversified portfolio will lose money. So the question is how much, and that will depend on what kind of stocks they own. Now, moving our focus to this uh, bond market, we've recently seen tenure, the 10-year Treasury yield at its highest point since 2011. What is your perspective on why bonds are moving or are um, in a downturn right now, um, and where do you see them heading in the near future? Well, the Federal Reserve has been tightening monetary conditions and increasing interest rates since December 2015. And starting about a year ago, the Fed started to reduce its balance sheet. In other words, uh, they didn't buy additional bonds, uh, but they actually sold bonds and as a result of that, they reduced the balance sheet. Uh, this combined with, uh, let's say, some symptoms of inflation have led bond buyers to stay away. So in other words, the supply of bonds is very large because, as you know, under the Trump policies, we have essentially unlimited uh, budget deficits, fiscal deficits, and we have reduced demand, which pushes up interest rates. I think that uh, compared to equities, 10 years treasuries are now relatively attractive relatively, but they're not ab absolutely attractive because the yield is not like 5-6%, but it's 3.2%. Right, and when investors you know, start realizing this, how do you see the dynamics between the stock market and the bond market really playing out? Well, to tell you the truth, nobody knows for sure. There were periods in the last hundred years when bond yields went up and stocks continued to rally. And there were periods in the last hundred years when bond yields went up, in other words, interest rates went up and stock prices declined. Both has happened. So if you ask me today, well, what will happen to the bond market, what will happen to the stock market, we don't know for sure. We can make certain assumptions, 
but we don't know for sure because the markets are being manipulated by central banks. And speaking of that, some concrete ways in which central banks are, you know, affecting the stock market, obviously, um, or affecting markets in general, obviously, you know, the Fed's policy is to control interest rates. So that's a very obvious way there. Um, but also Japan and Switzerland have, you know, been buying equities. What is your perspective if we see another crisis where there is a significant drop in the stock market? Um, do you think other central banks and even the Fed might step in to prop up the market by buying equities? Well, that's a good question, because basically to buy equities is not the mandate. But as you know, the Federal Reserve has a so-called plunge protection team and to what extent it would be used in a further significant sell-off in equities who knows these are all things you and I we don't know we only can make certain assumption uh, my assumption is that the Federal Reserve uh, and especially the Trump administration does not want a stock market that collapses. So what the interventions will be, we don't know for sure. Maybe the Fed will not come in, but uh, what can happen is that the Treasury Department would... Uh, essentially by equities, that is a possibility. And what specifically do you think that would look like, the Treasury buying equities? How, how would that happen? Well, basically, it's quite simple. The Treasury could essentially uh, borrow money and use that money to buy equities. Now, if they borrow money, then obviously the deficit goes up, but then the Fed may ease monetary conditions, you understand? So, indirectly, the Fed has, of course, an influence on uh, essentially the government purchasing equities. But it may not happen, and it may happen. My sense is, if the market here, the stock market, drops another 15%, in other words, we would be down by 20% peak to trough, the Federal Reserve will no longer increase rates, and it may very well start to lower rates once again. You mentioned how the last thing the Trump administration wants is a falling stock market. And also, last time we had you on, you were talking about the one of the last things the Trump administration wants is a strong dollar. Now, we had you back on in April. You said we might see a strong dollar um, in the short term. Um, you know, ever since then, it's, the dollar has just gotten stronger. So can you give us an update on this? And what do you see happening to the dollar uh, going forward? Yes. Uh, the dollar has been uh, basically very strong. Uh, will it continue? Who knows? Because that depends also on policies in Western Europe and in Japan. But for now, I agree the dollar has been strong. On fundamentals, personally, I do not think that the dollar should be strong. But uh, there are all kinds of views, you know, they say, well, the dollar is not a good currency, but the others are even worse. So these are things that are very difficult to predict. I personally think that the dollar may strengthen somewhat more, but eventually I think the dollar will weaken considerably as the Fed, uh, given the economic weakness that is developing, and very clearly developing, 
that the Fed will no longer increase rates and may embark on a quantitative easing sometimes towards the end of the year or early next year. And in that case, I think the U.S. dollar could become very weak. Now, moving our focus to the last topic, I'd like to discuss precious metals. Um, Last time we had you on, you were talking about how you're bullish on precious metals, especially silver, you see has a greater upside. Um, We've seen a little, we've seen uh, precious metals stay pretty um, constant. They have just risen in the past couple weeks a bit. Do you think precious metals have bottomed? And also, are you still more bullish on silver? Well, the thing is, uh, precious metals this year in U.S. dollars are down 7%. Okay? So it's not exactly a strong performance, but they're still up compared to 1999 and compared to December 2015. So it hasn't been a disaster. Moreover, this year, most European and Asian markets are down more than 7% in dollar terms. So whoever says gold is horrible as an investment, it hasn't done well, but it's done better than the majority of foreign markets and the majority of commodities. So I think that the the performance is not a disaster, but I think uh, given what I just told you, that eventually the Fed will not increase rates much further and will eventually cut them, I think uh, gold and silver are relatively attractive investment vehicles. Definitely. And regarding gold versus silver, are you still seeing that silver has a greater potential upside? Yes. In bull markets for precious metals, silver tends to shine, in other words, outperform gold. But as I said, uh, we don't know exactly when this turn will come and when precious metals will take off. Because the dollar strength, uh, precious metals have less use for investment.